You're listening to Sarah Hagen backstage with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen backstage. My guest today, Joe Saylor, is the drummer on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert and in the band Stay Human with John Batiste, and he has been dubbed the Jazz Cowboy for his signature cowboy hat look. Today we are going to talk about the amazing jazz scene in New York City, getting The Late Show gig, making it through the pandemic, and what is on the horizon. So come along with me as I catch up with Joe Saylor. Joe Saylor, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Sarah. It's a it's a it's an honor to uh, be here among all the other great drummers that you've had. Oh, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. But it's really really good to catch up with you yeah. and to see you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we haven't seen each other. I think maybe the last time we saw each other was at Pacific. Yeah, um, I think you're right. I think you're right. Twenty eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, maybe. Maybe 2019. And it feels like a whole lifetime ago. Yes, it does. Yes, right? It does. Like we, yes. We've lived a lifetime in those yes. few years, for sure. Tell many, me many years have passed. You, yes, I know. It, it's been crazy. And I know like things are um, pretty getting back to like a new normal now, which is really nice. But yeah. tell me how you spent that time, you know, especially in the beginning of the pandemic, because like, you know, you're you're on the late show with Stephen Colbert and that kind of like shuts down. And um, how how was everything for you? Yeah, well, you know, of course, like, um, you know, for everyone else, it was it was it was shocking and it was kind of like, so what do we do now? You know, mm-hmm. and we all just had to figure it out. Um, I would say for the first uh, for the first month or so. Uh, the band on the show, we didn't really do anything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we, we spent that time figuring out, like, okay, what what can we do? Um, and so, yeah, like we we figured out how to how to record ourselves remotely, kind of like individually, and you mm-hmm. know, one of us would you know lay down our part throw it in Dropbox, send it to the next musician. And we kind of mm-hmm. like layer it like that. Um, so it was, well, it was hard for me because I, at the time, I don't, I haven't tended to, to keep up with like the technological advances as much as other people. So my, I had like an old laptop that wasn't really working. And so I had to like, I, I had to buy a new, new computer. Um, I had to, teach myself how to use logic. I had to buy microphones. You know, it was all new for me. All yes. that was new for me. So that was that was challenging. I um, understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, on top of that, um, my wife and I had just had a baby, um, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. But uh, you know, trying to figure out how to play my drums in our apartment, you know, and not wake her up and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was hard, but, um, you know, I was thankful to still be working, to be honest. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that trumped everything, you know, I was just like, wow, I still, I still have a job. I still can work you know, Mm -hmm. figure out a way to do it. And then eventually, eventually, um, you know, when they slowly opened the Ed Sullivan Theater back up to some of us, I could go in there and record. Mm -hmm. And so that was cool. Then I could really go for it without being hesitant, you know? Yes, absolutely. And, and I just want to talk a little bit too about, about the show, because um, I love what's been happening in recent years with, you know, like the late night shows, the band always has a big part in it. It always has a big role. Um, the drummers though, like more recently, we, I think about like Max Weinberg with uh, the Conan O'Brien show. Like he had mm-hmm. such a good part in that and he was always in the skits and everything. And then you have Questlove um, with Jimmy Fallon and he's like just a big part of the show. And 
I love that you're such a big part of the Stephen Colbert show, like, you know, co-leading the band and then also like talking, being in skits. Um, it's so good. It's just so good to see. Um, the, the one, the jazz cowboy skit was just like hysterically funny. Yeah. And for anyone who's listening who hasn't seen that, I'll link it in the description um, and in the show notes for the podcast because it is so good. And like, you know, you're talking about doing spinoffs of spinoffs um, right. and you're like using percussion instruments to like fight the bad guys. And yeah. it's just, it's fantastic for anyone who's a drummer. It's like, yes, you just use a symbol like to, to as a shield. <laughs> as a shield. Right. Right. Yeah. Good. I mean, um, yeah, they, they, you know, the writers came up with all that and you know, mm -hmm. the, those, those people were amazing. Um, and so, you know, I was just, you know, honored that they would write, write, write apart for me, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to the writers too, because, you know, yeah. like, I think of, I think of, um, skit ideas all the time. And if you're around me, oh, wow. like, I'll be like, Oh, I had this great idea. I mean, they're always like wacky and ridiculous because that's how my brain works, but yeah, like that, like, yeah. Symbol is a shield. That's so great. Yeah. But, yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, they, the, the way that their minds work, I'm just like in awe. Yeah. So, yeah. so fantastic. But, but I love your role on that show and with the band, um, with John Batiste and Stay Human and, you know, just like, it's just such a big part of it, um, of the vibe of the whole thing. So mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, so we, we, we have, we have a good time, you know, it's a, it's a group, good group of musicians. The band has changed um a lot over the years you know it's like people have come in and come out um a few of us have have remained constant me and and lewis cato mm -hmm. um and uh uh the uh, trumpet player john lampley was there from the beginning but yeah we got a great group now um so good. yeah yeah and like you know top musicians too you mentioned lewis he's like He's just, he's so fantastic. And I, I knew Lewis as a drummer and then, you know, he's like, oh yeah, I play all these other instruments and not just like I play all these other instruments. Like he, he is so good, like yes. masters the other instruments. So, um, yeah. one of my favorite things of quarantine was the videos that you all did with, you know, you in the squares, like Brady Bunch style and, mm -hmm you know, Lewis singing and you're like, it's just, it was so, so good. Like that, that stuff kept me going personally through that crazy time. So thank you for that. For sure. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you mentioned technology. It's like, it's pretty incredible that, um, we, a lot of us went from like old laptops and not knowing like what microphone to have or all of yeah. that, but like really fast, we had to catch up and, you know, and now we do things like this, which is, it's just incredible. Yeah. Like this is, this is normal now. Yes. You know, this it's type, of, which is awesome. I love it. <laughs> you know? It is. Well, like now, instead of my, you know, even just a friendly phone call, it's, it's a lot of FaceTime. It's a lot of, yeah. it's a lot of Zooming. Like, hey, let's jump on a Zoom call so I can see your face. I love that so much. Yeah. Get a couple of friends together and just do a Zoom hang. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do, I do like that. Like, even though we were kind of forced into it, it opened up new possibilities for, for, for sure. communication in that way. And then in a strange way, I don't know if you felt this, but like, there are some people that I felt closer to, like even during quarantine, just because we talked more or we had mm -hmm. more FaceTime, um, we made more of an effort, I think to like, because you just didn't know. You didn't know when you were going to see someone again in person and yeah. um, be able to fly again and, and do yeah. all of that. Yeah. Um, we all but, have um, more time. Yeah. We have more time to do that, too. You know, it was, yeah, it was more time to think about that, too. Yeah. Right? To yeah. Focus on it. Yeah. That's that. That's the one thing that I that I that I liked about it. You know, it, 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 it stopped us. Yes. You know. It paused us. So, some of us, not all of us, obviously. Yes. Well, yeah. And, yeah, and that's a really interesting point. But us in the music industry, we were yeah. we were paused for sure. Um, yeah. I have friends who are, you know, first responders who work in hospitals and all of that. Um, and 
their jobs, you know, besides all of the PPE and having to like, you know, just um, adjust to protocols and testing and all of that stuff. Um, but it was really kind of like strange um, juxtaposition because like their, their lives carried on in really like a very similar way as before. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, an industry like the music industry was like basically shut down and struggle, struggled to figure out like, where are we going here? How are we going yeah. to, to come back from this? And um, it feels really good though. And I know, so you're in New York and you must have like opportunities to see music again all the time at the club. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I missed, I miss that so much, you know? Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we rely on. We, we, we rely on gatherings of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how we make a living, you know? Yes. Um, and, um, yeah, it's been so good to, you know, it was cool though, because, um, I feel like there are a few places around the city um, where like, you know, like a coffee shop owner uh, opened up his sidewalk outside of his shop and, you know, rented a drum set. And, you know, he, he people created gigs, you know, where they yes. could, like in outdoor open, open uh, area places. And, um, you know, so there were some times where, you know, the cats, really gathered, you know, during the pandemic, mm -hmm. which is really cool, you know. That is super cool. Yeah, yeah. That's but, amazing. Um, yeah, I'm going down to Smalls tonight, hang, you know. Yeah, yeah, Who? so who's, are you playing tonight or who's playing tonight? I'm not playing, I'm going to hear uh, the great pianist, Eric Lewis, E. Lou, oh, and uh, nice. EJ Strickland's playing with him. Um, EJ is, you know, he's one of those, one of the guys that I looked up to uh, when I first moved to New York. Wow. You know, he, he was a couple of years older than me. And, you know, there are a handful of guys that were a couple of years older than me that I would go and see all the time. And he was one of them. Actually, he played with 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 Elu um, at this club on the Upper West Side called Cleopatra's Needle. And they played like every Monday night and it, they would play the first set and it was a jam session. Wow. Um, yeah, so I just thought of that actually. That's so nice, and I just like like that memory came across, and you know, you, a smile came across your face just remembering that experience. Yeah, yeah. Like how how great is that? If I feel like um, music for me is also a tie to memory, you know, so much of mm -hmm. my memories include music or surround music. And I do the same thing. Like I just get this big smile on my face when I think about, you know, yeah. those experiences. And, um, and speaking of those experiences, I kind of want to go back and hear about you as a kid, because you started playing like super young, I think three years old, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I started playing. So my dad was one of the, um, you know, uh, leaders of the music ministry in our church. Mm -hmm. And he was also uh, a music teacher and, you know, he gigged on the weekends in a, a, in a big band. And so, you know, I, I was around it all the time. I guess I just grab, gravitated toward the, towards the drums, you know, the classic uh, setting up the pots and pans at home. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I think I say three years old because um, when I was three for Christmas, my parents bought me like a little toy drum set. Yes. And I guess that was my official start. Um, but yeah, you know, um, it was always, uh, you know, my, my mom's a, 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 she's a singer, she's a flute player, she's a choir director. So my parents were like, they were, they would give private lessons in the house and, mm -hmm. They were involved in like the, the uh, marching band in the community. So I was just brought up in it. You know? So great. Yeah. yeah. And was it always jazz for you? Like, were you were you into other styles of music? Or was it always was it always jazz? It was mainly jazz because my, my dad loved jazz. Mm -hmm. You know, he was he was a jazz musician. Like I said, he played in 
he played in like a 1940s, you know, kind of style jazz band. And they gigged on the weekends and yeah, he'd be listening, you know, he was a trumpet player. So he, he loved the big band. So he loved like Maynard Ferguson and Woody Herman. So he'd be playing all this music in the house, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's all you hear. You love it, you know? Um, and, uh, and, and Christian gospel music too. Cause you know, we were very involved in our church mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but then uh, by the time I was 12, um, my dad wanted to get me with like a serious teacher. Mm -hmm. so we, we lived about a little over an hour outside of Pittsburgh. So he found this guy in Pittsburgh named Roger Humphreys. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And, and Roger agreed to teach me, you know, and that was, I mean, that, that really shifted it to like, to, to to the next level to 10th gear yeah. yeah as far as like you know my love for jazz you know because roger introduced me to a lot of music that you know my dad didn't necessarily know about like mm -hmm. uh like people like art blakey and you know john coltrane and elvin jones mm -hmm. you know he, he he's the first one who told me about these people and told me to get certain records you know, yeah. Um, so I just, yeah, I was, I was in it. I was in it all the way. So great. And and you ended up like having a formal education in, in music too. Um, Manhattan mm -hmm. School of Music and then Juilliard, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I, I knew, I knew I wanted to go to New York. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember how old I was, but by the time I was a teenager, I had, I kind of had, had my, my sights set on New York because, you know, I read the liner notes of the CDs and every, everything was recorded in New York and, you know, I read the books and, and, um, what was that, a uh, series, Ken Burns jazz, you know, yeah. series came out, you know, I watched that a million times and, um, anyways, yeah, my dad, actually, my dad took me to New York for my 16th or for Christmas when I was 16. Um, and we went to the blue note and we saw Chick Corea, the three quartets band with, with Steve Gadd mm -hmm. and Michael Brecker and Eddie Gomez. Wow. And that, that was my first, that was my first time. And then a year later, he took me back again to the blue note to see Elvin. And, um, you know, that, that, that was it, you know, that, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's where I was going. Right. <laughs> you <know? right. laughs> and yeah. you'll never forget that too, you know, oh my like those, those moments. Um, and I, I just love that you had your sights set on what you wanted to do and you did it, you went for it and, you I know, yeah. And, and how was the tra transition too? like coming to New York, being in the middle of the city, um yeah. just being surrounded by everything how was that i mean it was amazing you know super exciting it was it was definitely a shock though you know i, I remember i remember <clears throat> maybe a month or two after i had moved there to go to school my dad came up and he he drove me home for the weekend mm -hmm. i just remember on the way home you know driving the country roads thinking like man I, I live, I live in a different world now, you know, yeah. um, it, it's, you know, the pace of the city, you know, especially back then, it's definitely slowed down after the pandemic, mm -hmm. but, you know, back then it was just, it was so fast and so high energy and just things going on all the time, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, I was 18 years old. I was loving it. You know, I was at, yeah. I was at Manhattan school of music. Um, yeah, I did four years there, uh, really surrounded by, you know, incredible musicians. Right. I mean, in my class, you know, like Marcus Gilmore was in my class. Um, Obed Calvert was at school. Wow. He was like four or five years older than me. 
he was like doing his master's degree when I when I first got there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, people like um, Justin Brown was there and Ulysses Owens. He he was at Juilliard, but you know, like we yeah. were we were around each other. You know, yeah. So it was really cool to have, and like I said, like people like EJ, um, Quincy Davis. Wow. Um, play, played at played at uh, this club, Cleo's as well. I would yeah. go see him like every week. Yeah, just all these guys that were so, you know, they were very nice to me, you know. And, uh, yes. Very supportive. Drum, drummer, drummers are, uh, it's a nice community, you know. It really very is, supportive. yeah. Yeah, and that group you just described, like, the nicest people too <laughs> like yeah, amazing yeah, yeah all amazing. those guys <laughs> guys oh my gosh seriously like such such sweet sweet humans and yeah um yeah you're right and i i do mention it a lot but it it's worth mentioning this industry this this little microcosm that we're in this drum world is so mm -hmm. supportive and um yeah. and encouraging like you yeah. know you be surrounded by all those guys and them being surrounded by you and you know there's this like community like pulling each other up and and sharing opportunities too um yeah you know? giving, giving, giving gigs to each other you know sub subbing out gigs and exchanging ideas mm -hmm. yeah really really i don't i don't know any any bad people in the drumming community well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I can't I think, think of any right now. Right. right. I think that um it's such a small community that like, you know, you 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 recognize when when there's maybe someone who doesn't like gel with everybody and it just it right. doesn't work because right. there I think that's like none of us really have time for um for like the bad attitudes or the yeah. or the the cutthroat like competition yeah. i don't know i don't have time for yeah. that stuff <laughs> no. Nobody time for no. That. Yeah. nobody has time for that um yeah. but yeah it's a, it is such a such a great community and then like i can just imagine the playing opportunities too especially back then and you know like i i love 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 going to new york and just having this like oh, we could go here and see so-and-so, or we could go here and see so-and-so. And it's like every single night, there are these multiple opportunities to see mm -hmm. amazing, like world-class musicians in a small club, just like bringing it, you know. The and best, yeah, the best all night, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. all night long, yes. Yeah. Um, and I used to, any anytime we would come, um, I don't know if you remember Robbie Gonzalez. He would he would like mm -hmm. he was like the ambassador of New York, and he'd be like, yeah. "Oh, we got it. We have to go here. We have to go there." And like literally, just walk in the door anywhere. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. I know, but so much fun. Yeah. Um, and then so you know you have this experience where you um where you're in New York and you're and you're you know doing all of these really great things and getting this incredible education and to have come to where you're at right now. I just think it's so fantastic. Those, those opportunities to like, you know, be co-leading a band on a, on a late night show and like be part of the show. And it's just those, those opportunities are, are kind of rare. And, and I just remember hearing about you and Lewis and, you know, getting this, getting this gig and being so happy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the gig kind of came as a surprise, you know. Um, you know, I had been playing with John pretty much since I moved to New York. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, like, yeah, his his his, his band has kind of like, you know, m morphed into several different things over the years as well. But it, it kind of landed as this group that he called Stay Human. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we had the opportunity to be um, the guest band on, on Stephen's old show on Comedy Central, Colbert Report. Mm -hmm. And we played and it was <clears throat> it was cool, you know, and it was a good vibe. And, you know, I think they really liked us. Um, and, you know, it just uh, it just kind of happened, you know, like I. I I think I think we were gearing up to like 
make another record and go, and go on tour. And they called and said, uh, you know, or they called John, you know, and asked him, uh, would you, would Stay Human be, be the band and would you be our band leader for the Late Show? Because he was about to take over for Letterman. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were like, oh, okay, well, I guess, I guess that's what we'll be doing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then to see, like, you know, John make, and we're talking about John Batiste, you know, like, just becoming a superstar and, and the music kind of, like, getting out there. I think he won five Grammys, if I'm not mistaken. He won five Grammys a couple of weeks ago. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And, I mean. And the number one record, right? The album record of the year. Right album I mean, of the year, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it's I'm, so, so I'm, so, I'm so happy for him. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's really good. I mean, he's, he's, he, he is really, you know, the hardest working man in show business and not only like hard working, but I mean, maybe the most talented, the gifted, you know, in certain ways. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, he just, he just has something so special that he's really, like um, developed in a really special way. Um, so I'm really glad to see him getting, you know, recognized for it. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we have to talk about like the, the style of music too being recognized because it's so rare. I think, you know, just um, the, the, the style of music is so unique and to have that out in the forefront among, you know, all of these kind of like, pop and you know r&b and all this stuff that kind of like traditionally wins those awards i just mm -hmm. I love that part of it too i think that's hugely important yeah yeah for sure well you know john has a john has a way of taking you know different styles of music that may not be the most popular at the time and presenting them in a way that people can really hear it Mm -hmm. you know and kind of like mm -hmm. maybe not fully understand it but like get it you know yes yeah he, he makes really it has a gift gift for that absolutely yeah and i and that's really important too i think like you know getting getting that music out there in a way that's accessible and like understandable to people um or to like a larger group of people i think is yeah. really important like the music is um it's so unique but it's also catchy like it's also, it also draws yeah. you in, you know? Yeah, um, for sure. And then yeah. the visuals, of course, like you all have always been like very, very visual as far as your performance goes. Yeah. Um, and I always love to see you out there like dancing and playing the tambourine too. So yeah. well, I love doing that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah. good. It's so, so yeah. good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, it's just, it's so great. What, what are the plans like coming up? Are you guys, um, I know you've got the show and I know you're really kind of like busy with, um, with recording and everything. And, um, but what are the plans for the future? Like, are you guys going out? Are you touring or how does that look? I don't, I don't really know. Um, uh, I know what I know, uh, thus far is, um, you know, of course, uh, we're, we're doing, we do the show Monday through Thursday, um, here in the city. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a constant thing. Um, John actually, he, uh, he wrote a symphony, um, called the American symphony and it's being premiered at Carnegie hall Wow! on May 7th. And so we're in, we're in uh, pretty intense rehearsals for that at the moment. I bet. So um, that's like a whole another thing that's going on um, or that has been going on. Yes. That's um, exciting. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that incorporates um, as you can imagine, like a lot of different type of stuff as well. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we're preparing for that. Um, you know, me, I'm always doing like, you know, little gigs around the city, you know, go, going oh, yeah. on and stuff, you know, so I got a lot of that stuff going on. 
Um, as far as like tours, nothing in the works yet mm -hmm. that I know, but I'm sure, I'm sure some stuff will be happening. You know, he actually, he, he just got, um, it was just announced that he just got cast in the new color purple movie. I um, saw that. We'll be doing that, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. How great is that? That's going to be yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be cool. Yeah. yeah. That, that's so great though. I mean, I would, I would love to see you guys touring around too and, you know, bringing, bringing the music. Um, yeah. No, yeah. I definitely, I definitely miss, I definitely miss going on the road. Uh, uh, certain things about it, you know, I, 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 I miss, bringing yeah the music and the experience and the whole thing to mm -hmm. um people you know different kinds of people in, in different kinds of places and i love traveling you know yes absolutely um, so yeah i'm I, I, I would look forward to, to doing more of that yeah and and so where um where should people go to like find out what you're up to like these gigs that you're in new york are you posting on social media, like how can they find you to? Okay, to see? so so far, um, my where you can find me is Instagram. Okay, that's all I got for the moment. All right, that's good. <laughs> Instagram. And uh, I do have a Twitter account, but I don't think I've posted on it for over like three years. <laughs> so I'll have to resurrect that. Um, and I'm working on I'm working on a website. Do people stu still do websites? They days? do. Okay. They do websites. Okay. Yeah, for especially for like what you have going on, because then you can, yeah. you know, you can update people and put your yeah. music out there and all that stuff too. Yeah. Like I said, like that that whole that whole world is um, it intimidates me. So I understand. I, to, I get I have it. To, I have to jump into it more. But yeah, but yeah, yeah Instagram now. Follow me. It's just my name, Joe Sailor, on Instagram and. Yes. Um, and I'll put a link in there too. So everyone can, can go and follow you. And I, okay. you know, I, I understand about like social media, online stuff. It's a, it's a whole world of its own. And I have to bring up a funny story too, because in Googling, I always do a little, you know, make a little outline before these podcasts and mm -hmm. make sure that I know all the, because, you know, you guys are always doing so many things that mm -hmm. I want to make sure I touch on all of them. But in Googling Joe Saylor, um, it was really funny because a lot of like a lot, a lot of stuff came up. People wondering where you were because you were absent from um, the show like for a couple of weeks in January, and like the speculation of where was the jazz cowboy. It was it cracked me up, um, and so I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because it was it was funny. Yeah. Um, that's funny. My, my parents called me, uh, during that time and they said, did you know what the internet, what people are saying, what people are asking about you, what they, what they think yes. going on? I didn't think people cared. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's nice to know that they care. It is, um, right? Yeah. No, I, I got COVID, um, you know, and they sent me home for two weeks, which is a company, uh, protocol. Um, mm -hmm. thankfully I didn't, I didn't get sick. Um, but you know, I tested positive and, uh, so I, I was sitting at home. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. People, people were like, did he have a baby? What happened? You know, wow. like it was, it was, it was funny to read, you know, and then it yeah. was like, people are silent on this, you know, and in the time of COVID, I think, the assumption should probably be that you have COVID. <laughs> like, right. I would think that that would be their first, yeah. first guess. Their first but guess. No, that's, yeah. that's, that's nice. It's nice that people, uh, that means they're watching. Yes. Yeah. That means they're watching attention. that they care, right? And they're yeah. paying attention. And, that, and also that you've kind of like carved out a space for yourself, like, you know, within this, within this world of late night television, people expect to see you and, they look forward to seeing you, which is like such a good thing. And you it's know, it's really cool. You know, I mean, I think about. Um, did you know Ed Shaughnessy? I did. Yes. So I uh, I got to study with him when I was like thirteen or fourteen mm -hmm. for a, a couple summers, um, and 
you know, like I used to, I used to watch him because my, you know, my parents, anything that was like music on TV or like, you know, the Tonight Show would have a special guest, they would tape mm-hmm. it onto a VHS tape. So I used to, I used to see it on, on TV all the time. So I, it was really cool. I got to study with him. But um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of trippy. Like I never thought I'd, I'd have like a, a TV gig like him. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. yes, I think about that from time to time. I'm like, man. Yeah. How yeah. cool is that? I mean, sometimes yeah. we just have to stop and think about how cool it is because it is. It's yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different, it's a different kind of a gig. You know, you're there, you're there to serve, you know, you're there to serve a comedy show, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's, it's, a, it's a different mindset and it's a different way of playing. You know, you kind of, you kind of got to be on your toes in a certain, in a different way mm-hmm. than, on, than on a gig. Um, Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and also like the cowboy hat and like the persona and everything, like, I think it, it lends itself to, to that you know, like the character that you are. Yeah. And, you know, I w- the, I remember meeting you for the first time at a artist session in New York. And you came, I think maybe, maybe at the cutting room. At the, at the cutting room. Yes. Cutting room, yeah. yeah. Years back, so many yeah. years ago. But you walked in with a cowboy hat on and I was like, like immediately saw you recognized you and you know it was just like it's like a signature thing so um and then yeah, I I wondered, yeah. <laughs> where did he come from <laughs> you know the cowboy hat the cowboy hat came uh i was playing a gig at central park summer stage and a friend of mine was wearing a cowboy hat and and right as i walked on stage he took it off himself and he put it on me. And so I, I wore it for the gig. And then after the gig, nobody told me how, how good I sounded. They just told me how good I looked in the cowboy hat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, okay, people like that. Okay. Yeah. And then I, and I started wearing it from time. I bought one. And so mm-hmm. I started wearing it from time to time. And every time I did, I just, I got all kinds of compliments. So I thought maybe uh, that's a sign. Maybe it's a thing. It's yeah. A thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. So people say like, are you from, are you from Texas? Or like, did you grow up, you know, riding horses? I'm like, none of that. It, yeah. <laughs> it, it has no significant meaning. <laughs> it's definitely a it. thing though. Yeah. It's so, it's yeah. so. And great. you know what? I feel like I'm also like in a, in a, in a lineage of great jazz drummers. Because Roy Haynes wore a cowboy Roy hat. Roy Haynes, yes. Uh, Art Blakey. There's a couple of pictures of Art Blakey wearing the cowboy hat. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm not the original jazz cowboy. That's you so, know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm carrying I'm carrying the torch. You're carrying the torch. You're carrying yeah. all the tradition. And I love that. Yeah. Um, Roy, the, the first time I met Roy, I picked him up at the train station. Um, he took the train from New York for the day to pick out symbols. And I picked him up at the train station. I was so nervous. Yeah. Um, and I said to one of my coworkers, like, I've never met him before. How will I know where he is? And this is so funny. Cause this was like in the time where like not a lot of people had cell phones and stuff. So yeah. I was just like blindly going there to pick him up and they were like, Oh, don't worry. You'll recognize him. You know? Yeah. So I pulled up and he was dressed to the nines and he had cowboy boots on and his cowboy hat, full yeah. suit. He did and the I'm, full thing. Yeah. So good, so good. Yeah, and he did. He have, off- did he have like the sunglasses? Yeah, and- sunglasses on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, That's this awesome. is maybe the coolest guy I've ever met in my life. Um, he he really is. I um, when I moved to New York, I was really fortunate because I got to see him a lot. Mm-hmm. I got to see him play a lot. You know, he what is he now? Ninety six or ninety seven? Yeah, I think he's, he's 97. He just turned yeah. 97, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so when when I moved here, like, 17, 18 years ago, he was, like, just turning 80. Yes. And he was an old man then, but he was he was playing all the time. He was playing at the Vanguard and the Blue Note mm-hmm. and festival. I would see him at festivals all the time, really, because, um, you know, he doesn't play much anymore. So really thankful to 
have seen him seen him yeah. like never Absolutely. you know never got to see people like i never got to see art blakey mm -hmm. i saw elvin that one time but that was it i think elvin died like uh right when i moved here um didn't get to see billy higgins mm -hmm. um didn't didn't get to see max i went to max's funeral that was that was that was the only time i saw him in the casket wow yeah that's the only time i saw him um but uh yeah but so so fortunate to have have gotten to see roy yeah so, yes i same thing anytime that he came to boston i was like i have to i have to get out and see him um what a force you know it's just oh my goodness unbelievable unbelievable yeah. player unbelievable leader you know yeah. just musician yeah um, did you ever get to know uh two to heath um not well but yes i did i did uh see him play and um i i have a funny story because when i started working at zildjian um so he was like in the system in in the contact system as right. He was just like Tootie, like not his full name or anything. And I got a call one day from Albert and I was like, who, what? <laughs> I, don't know who <laughs> I didn't know that that was actually his name. It was Albert. Yeah. Um, I had no idea, but, um, you know, this is forever ago, but yeah. So I, I did know him, but, um, but not really well. Yeah. Well, he was, he was another one for me that, um, you know, I got to spend a, a lot of time with um and, and see awesome. him a lot. You know, he's he's living in uh I think he's living in New Mexico now, but um awesome. not playing so much anymore. But yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, some some of um some of those guys are are you know still with us. This is amazing. You know. It is it is amazing. I do think that there's something <clears throat> about drumming and music that like keeps you young. Um, For sure. You know, young at heart and and young looking. Like I I feel like there are so many, yeah. so, so many drummers out there that like you would never guess, never guess their age. A Kenny Aronoff comes to mind. Like wow. you know, he's like he is like ageless somehow. Yeah. And, you know, there are so many other Sheila E. Oh my goodness. Mm, mm -hmm. there's, there's something about about drumming. I don't know what it is. Well, it, it's 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 it, it keeps your heart rate up. Activity, it, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's active. It's an active I feel like it's a childlike thing to it too. You know, all yes. At some point all kids are hit banging on something, you know. Absolutely. You, yeah. You young in a certain way. Yeah, it does. It because it's fun. Like drumming is so much fun. And so yeah. like find a way to do that. And when did, when did you start? I started when I was 10. Okay. Yeah, I started like taking lessons in school. Um snare yeah. drum lessons and got into like the the school bands and all that and Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, and it's just um you know, I fell in love with drums at a, like a really young age, but I was so lucky to have like a school program to, right. to involved with um and to get like a formal education in reading music and rudiments mm. and all that stuff and um mm. and then and then i got into the jazz band and that opened up like a whole other world for me because i had never been um exposed to like improvising okay you know like i was really really focused on snare music and marching band and concert band and all that uh, stuff okay. and reading and doing it right so like getting into jazz music was quite a transition for me. I didn't grow up listening to it. Um, my yeah. parents were like into um, mm. like rock and roll, kind of classic rock, that kind of stuff. Who were your um, favorite drummers when you were growing up? Oh my goodness. Growing up, well, John Bonham was like my ultimate favorite. And of course, like he's, he's like the rock drummer with the, with the swing. You know what I mean? Like yeah, he had yeah. like, to it so yeah. um later on understanding more about his playing was was a gift i think but um but like dennis chambers and sheila e and yeah um all the you know i was really like mtv was such a big thing back then that right. it was like you could see that's how we saw, that's yeah. How we saw drummers yeah for um, sure. but yeah dennis was a huge huge influence of mine growing up and then getting into jazz music and like delving into 
all of that. And, and then like the different levels and layers of jazz, like there's just so much there, you know, the Tony Williams, and then the, the, like the, you know, traditional style of music. And of course, yeah. you know, um, Roy and, and, and then, you know, and the big band stuff, I mean, there's yeah. just, it's so amazing. I remember getting records like Buddy Rich records and the, the Buddy Rich and the G- Gene Krupa um, yeah. and then, like the drum battles and stuff. And like, yeah. for a drummer, all that stuff is just like, it just feeds your soul, I think. Yeah. Did you, did you ever meet Tony? I did not. I didn't meet him. He, he passed away before I was really kind of like old enough to, to be like going out and seeing a lot of music. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I missed him too. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? We're you, you guys are, are this generation's those guys. So I mean, sure, yeah. You, have, yeah, you have so many, um, you know, young eyes looking up to you, and, and oh, you I got some great young drummers out here. It's amazing, right? I mean, I I always say like the talent level at the young age right now is so incredible. It's scary. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, some of these guys are. Amazing. Chops, so amazing. chops galore yeah yeah i love it yeah well and that's a good question too like are you when you go out what are you seeing from like the next generation coming up because i think like well i mean really like that young generation i'm seeing them all over the world i mean i'm seeing videos from like asia mm. videos from poland young drummers playing but of course new york's always like the like a center of that yeah. stuff. being young kids out there playing playing out playing gigs live yeah you know more so i i'm seeing uh you know a lot of drummers kind of like um on it like on instagram and like mm-hmm. on youtube you know a, yeah. a lot of a lot of them have like their own Channels. You know, followings and, and pages yeah. and stuff and like kind of you know approaching music in a in a different way, yes. um, you know, and uh, that that's, that's a new thing, you know, mm-hmm. that's kind of like an unprecedented, um, you know, being a, a, a YouTube, like being like a social media, like music influencer type of thing, you know, and, yeah. and, and a lot of people, and a lot of young people are, I feel like they're becoming, they're becoming famous and known on their pages, mm-hmm. you know, and, then, and then that's how they're getting gigs as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's an interesting thing because I think, like, the pandemic um, um, accelerated that, yeah. you know? And yeah. that's all you really could do. And so these young musicians who really kind of grasped social media and video, taking videos and posting them and the cadence of all of that, mm. and, you know, they had this, this opening to really kind of um, – get themselves out there. And, but the one thing that I'm seeing right now, and you just mentioned it is a lot of those um, young drummers are now getting gigs and going out on tour. And I think that's really, really super important too, because having the chance to like play in real time with other musicians and, and getting out there and like displaying that talent. I think that's a, it's a great next step for, for so many of these, these young. It really is. It, especially if you're, if, especially if you're playing jazz, I think it's hard to, um, you know, I've done, I've done a few, like, you know, I did PASIC and I've, mm-hmm. I've done a few other like, dr- like drum clinics. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was the only guy that showed up with a, with a band. Right. You know, I, I think I was like the, the jazz guy on the bill, mm-hmm. but um, because, because I, you know, jazz is such like a, it's a communal it's more of a communal music than, than others, you know, right. and, and I, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of drummers, you know, you, you look online they're playing the tracks and stuff and they're like, I mean, they're killing it, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but you don't find a lot of, um, you don't find a lot of jazz drummers doing that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. That, that's more of, that's more of a, a, I feel like a, a communal, uh, vibe. Yeah, it's it is. You know, and, and, uh, I mean, it's an improvisatory music, you know. Um, exactly. What were, you, what were you about to say? No, I was just going to say I, I agree. I think like jazz music is 
that is something that's um it's meant to be like a community event right <laughs> like yeah yeah um, and it, and you know um there's something that is there's something about jazz music that is um uh so that is not structured and and it's loose and it's kind of that like push and pull between the musicians and and i think that's what makes it that's what makes it yeah so beautiful and yeah. that's what i love about it and yeah. you know sometimes and sometimes it's kind of like um i was talking to a friend about this recently when you're not really sure like where it's going and you get a little nervous like being in the audience and that feeling is fun like it's it's fun it's kind of like you know being on a roller coaster and like not sure what's going to happen next and you're and you're yeah. like Excited to see where it goes and are they going to pull it back and is he going to get back from that and are they going to come back uh, yeah you know, that, that feeling of watching live <clears throat> jazz music i always love yeah i think that's i think that's really exciting too and then to, and then to see like are are they going to help each other yes go yeah. come out of it or go somewhere else you know like yeah. are they going to are they going to let him on his own are they going to help you know because it's a yeah. It's a team effort. Yeah. You know? Are they gonna are they gonna pull that back this way? Yeah, it's a push it's a push and yeah. it's a push and pull between all, all the all the musicians. It is. It's so yeah. good. So so it. good. Well, I, I can't wait to get back to New York and see some great music. And you know, we do we do have great music coming through Boston too. Great, great jazz music. We have some some fantastic venues here. It's just like slow to pick up, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I look forward to to getting back to New York, and cool. I will link all of these things too, so that everyone can follow you, see okay. what you're up to. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, and you know, keep up with you and what you have going on. I appreciate that, and please um uh, contact me when you when you come to town. I will for sure. You yes, I know. I so look forward to seeing you again in person. Yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely. All right, well, thank, thank you, Sarah. You, Thanks for having me. Thank you so, so much for being here today. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. You take care. I'll All see right. you soon. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.